Cool. It was only 10 minutes. <laughs> Welcome to Book Club for Movies, everybody. For the week of 420, man. 420, man. I'm not even high, and I we were having to do this a second time after like 10 minutes of recording because I. You're really recording right now. I forgot to hit record. Uh, but right now, you are recording. Right now, everybody, he is Matt Amberg, and he is recording. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Ryan Miller, if I didn't mention that. This is Book Club for Movies, where we watch one movie a week. We typically talk about it once or twice by 10 minutes. <laughs> and invite you to do the same. Uh, watch the movie. Check us out at podcast at bookclubformovies.com. If you want to email us, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. Of course, who isn't? This week, the movie, and excuse me if I'm moving quickly, but again, we've done this before. It's Stan and Ollie. Matt Amberg, do you have a synopsis? I know you have one. I don't even want to ask. I guess. I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Stan and Ollie coming at you an hour and 38 minutes. Written by Jeff Pope and A.J. Marriott. Directed by John S. Baird. Starring Steve Coogan, John C. Riley, Shirley Anderson, Nina Arianda. Nina Arianda. Okay. And Danny Houston. And here is your book club for movie synopsis for Stan and Ollie. With their golden years of film, a decade passed and a friendship that has waned over that time, Laurel and Hardy reunite for their last live tour across Europe and Ireland with the hopes that they'll recapture their fame in order to finance one final movie. Okay. So, this is a movie you suggested. I think both of us, I know, again, <laughs> both of us, jumped on the bandwagon with when that trailer came out and yeah. we saw Coogan and Riley and went wow you mean Laurel and Hardy and f for me that occupied kind of two different spaces over time I think is why I maybe didn't run out and see it why it's taken me this long even though I have wanted to see it I like Coogan and Riley an awful lot and I've never seen Hamlet too <laughs> there thank you for getting to that first <laughs> I just not even want to jump the gun uh, there are two things that happened there. I've, and I feel like this says more about me than anything, but the first time it happened with me was Lincoln, a movie that I ended up loving eventually. But when that movie got announced, it was like starring Sally field directed by Steven Spielberg. And I was like, is this an SNL skit type <laughs> thing? You know, like this almost occupied that space. Like it looks amazing. And again, I think I'm just getting jaded, but I kind of, put it in that category of it being a good enough and probably fun movie that I should definitely see someday at the very least, very beautiful type thing. Sure. And I don't know if I've ever been more wrong. <laughs> I, I get it, man. I I'm coming from the same position. Like I didn't, I didn't know what to expect out of this movie. I, I actually, I guess I had expectations, but they were completely wrong. Like <laughs> I don't want to say I was exactly, I don't want to say they were subverted in, in, in that I was in a, I was in a totally different stadium <laughs> than, right. than these were. It subverted your incorrect expectations. Mm, bingus bangus. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it, it was, it's great. It, it was a, it was a great like surprise to go to, to find out that this is a movie that doesn't deal with the rise to fame. Um, yeah. they're, they're, they're already at their peak as you've pr previously mentioned on other episodes of this episode. <laughs> Nobody's heard it. At this uh, yet. yeah, we've got multiple episodes of this episode. You're only hearing this one now. Before we get there though, why don't you tell me again for the first time your history <laughs> with the comedy duo itself? Sure. Uh, I don't have a ton of history with them. I, I grew up watching a lot of the, the, um, the the comedians and and the, the vaudevillians that that they were uh, contemporaries with uh, right. that were inspired by inspired or inspired so you know a lot of uh, the Marx Brothers the Stooges uh, Laurel and Hardy um, Abbott and Costello Abbott and Costello yeah. thank mm -hmm. you that's the other one Abbott and Costello uh, all of them uh, tra the Chaplins you know Buster Keaton but I, I was never a big like Laurel and Hardy was not my thing i i knew about them like i'd seen i've seen stuff but i don't know their history i don't really know about them as people and i certainly didn't know this last chunk of of their right. careers together which was a very cool surprise yeah same i want to say honestly you don't get a whole lot of uh, laurel and hardy at you know typical or 
general film school classes. You know, I got a lot of Chaplin and they of course mentioned Laurel and Hardy, then Abbott and Costello, Marx Brothers, uh, Stooges, stuff like that. But I never went into that myself. So yeah. it never happened. Uh, at best, I think I saw the Stooges more than anything because when I came up, I was still able to see those reruns on TV, you know, catch the tail end of those type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but same as you probably always respected them and, and yeah. love the history stuff anyway. So I was excited regardless to see this thing for that reason alone. And you're right. It starts at a place though that I didn't necessarily expect. And I guess this is with biopics, you kind of go one way or the other. Although there are some that <laughs> run the gamut. <laughs> like uh, what? I mentioned, like what? I feel like this is my chance not to mention Bohemian Rhapsody like I did last time. And then, yeah, I almost did. <laughs> gamut. But this one begins with them at their peak, right? When they are just the biggest stars in the world. And uh, I want to say five minutes in makes the 16 year hop. So much of the movie is dealing with, I guess, kind of what happened in those 16 years. But essentially, it's about the comeback, right? This is about yeah. the comeback. Uh, the main thrust of the movie, I guess, ultimately comes down to Stan trying to get the money for a movie to get them back into film. That, that, that's ultimately what, the, what it comes down yeah. to. And he, 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 he kind of he, he, he lies to, to Ollie to get him to come to England and they hadn't been together. They hadn't spent any real time or talked to each other much in that 16 years. So I also kind of love that the movie really is not just about them going back onto the stage and trying to recreate what they were or not even recreate it, but just, just get it back or do it again. It, it's also, um, you know, a, a partially about them coming together again as people and learning who they are. And, and John C. Riley actually mentions it at one point. He, he says they're still trying to figure out who each other, they're trying to get to know each other again. Yeah. Hey, wrap it up. <laughs> Let's <right>. go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you skirted a couple things. And <laughs> I think one of them is, that elephant in the room, so to speak, where their contracts he, were just up. Just because he's overweight. Th their contracts were up at different times under Hal Roach was the name of the guy. And uh, Stan had headed off to Fox to sign over there. But uh, Ollie did not essentially try and get out of his contract. He finished up a film with a different person who I guess was an old uh, vaudeville or silent film. Yeah, it was another blip so, or I something. It was um, Langdon, I think, is what it was. In real life, Harry, anyways, the, Harry Langdon. Yeah, yeah that was it. And that becomes kind of an element throughout the film because they, uh, you know, obviously Stan feels replaced and betrayed and etc. And so that's the one thing. The other thing mm -hmm. I wanted to mention was yes. since it does start out at the top, it's a beautiful, just golden one shot of a moment. It's five minutes minimum where they're just walking through the set until they get, <laughs> you know, in front of the cameras. And they, uh, I believe it's a, uh, it's the Western they did way out West. It was I the believe? Western. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember the title. It, I think it's way out West. I think you're right. And when the cameras start rolling, they just start dancing. And for me, my first thought was, okay, I might have to look up why this is funny. Honestly. Sure. It, it was a joke I did not get. And the way they brought that back, we get the 16 year time hop. It does become about the comeback. And funnily enough, after that split and he made the movie without Stan, their career kind of did never recover. They, when they could get back together after that movie that uh, Ollie made and his contract expired, they got back together and signed for two more pictures, I think. And they're widely regarded as not even the beginning of the end, yeah. like not very good. No, yeah. they're 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 the bottom of the barrel. They're yeah. they're easily the the worst things those two ever did together. Then we get the sixteen year time hop. It does become about the comeback, but also that makes it about the changing times at the same time, right? Like in a way the movie then becomes about my question. Not getting that initial joke, it becomes it, the movie itself is now asking, is this timeless? Yeah. Is it a case of this was only funny back then. Right, right, right. You know, the the movie itself is asking the very same thing because it's 16 years later. They're trying to recapture that. Does it still play type thing, you know? Yeah, it, it's... And for some people, I mean, they're, they're the... Um, Laurel and Hardy are like an anachronism, you know, it's that 16 years later. It's like... It, it's And if you think about it, even as, as, as a, like, in current 
current day. And I mean, I, this might be a little more difficult. I, I mean, I guess humor is, is, is so it's, it's not just, sure. it's, a, it's not that it's subjective even. It's that, it's that humor is one of the, like y- you go through the decades and you can kind of see this ebb and flow of how, of how, where humor is and where it goes. And, you know, a, a decade, it, 10 years doesn't seem that long, but even a decade of, you know, you watch Austin Powers and then watch it 10 years later. <laughs> I actually just did this. I watched Austin Powers the other night and I loved those movies, man. I thought they were drop dead funny. And again, keeping in mind, I love slapsticky things. Those movies are just, eh, they were funny at the time. But they're not like the Naked Gun for me. For whatever reason, that has more of a of a of, a, of le- more legs, more of a lifespan. Same with that Top Secret. Timeless. Those it's, are timeless. They're, they're more timeless for me. <laughs> but there's an anachronism for some people where it's like this movie. It was a. It doesn't fit now. Like it's not. It, they're, 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 yeah, that's it, not there. It's 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 ancient. It's past, and it's only ten years. And the movie, I think, is concerned with that. Honestly, and. For me, it was great because so was I right then and there from the beginning. So I think it's in asking that question, in answering that question, and in giving you the two characters themselves, the two people themselves, and actors that can pull it off, that this thing just became 10 times more than I expected it to be. It is It is in every respect a, a, a stronger movie than I thought it was going to be. For sure. And there's all these little moments throughout the film where uh, there's a nice montage of it too at the end where people, and it begins at the front desk of that motel too. They do a little bit with the bell, you know, in real life, not on stage. And the front desk girl is like, oh, she might say like my parents or something like, you know, it's always either somebody else or I used to or type. So it's always couched in terms that are kind of, you know, almost backhanded compliments. And you can see the look on their faces sometimes when they get them. Yeah. But it's always my mother loves you guys. My parents love you guys. Like it's, 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 it was, it was, uh, it's, it's like, uh, um, uh, living nostalgia, like right in front of them. And, and, and they get to like, as, as those characters, they totally do have moments where they, they kind of have that. Oh, good. Old people like us and nobody else does. <laughs> but, and I think it's more than just the, or even making a commentary on the subjectivity of humor. Cause you're right. Like, there are things that are funny at different times than others, but there's also this aspect to, again, I love to sit down and learn about this stuff. I wasn't thinking, Oh, this isn't funny. I was thinking I need to find out why this is funny. Sure. And I'm not beyond getting into that and being like, Oh, and what honestly this film did is by the end, it did that better than I ever could have done it myself. And we're going to spoil this movie. If you can (laughs) still worth watching in every respect, but in fact, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I want to bring this together like it came together for me. But by the end, it's that same dance that's making me tear up. <laughs> you know? Sure. It's the very sure. same dance, man. The one that I was like, okay, I'll have to look up why this is funny. The movie, you don't need to look anything up. You just need to watch the movie. And and and, and I think, like, I totally get what you're saying, too, because you get uh, the, the dance. So the dance was a thing. It wasn't just that movie. Like, that. they were they were physical like that and, and that, mm-hmm. that kind of, and, uh, and, and throughout the, throughout the movie, because again, we're focusing here on the 15 year later, they're older. Ollie is not a small dude. And, and he, he mentions it a number of times that he has a harder time moving around and the dance right. can't really be done because his knees and his, 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 he can't hold his weight and it's just, he, he his body can't do it. And, it, and, you know, you kind of get an idea Probably, I, I think going into the movie, you get maybe halfway through and you get the idea of, you know, you, I mean, you kind of know what the ending is if you know the ending. You know, it's it's not like it's a hidden ending anywhere. This isn't this isn't some <laughs> thing that doesn't exist. But but it, it's yeah, it was totally that that dance, man. Like you just see them both together. It's it's there's a magic there that you just it's so hard to so hard to recreate something like that. Oh yeah. And and to have two people who were not the people that had that long years, years, decades long connection, they understood each other so well as friends to have two people come in and probably in, you know, 6 months make a movie and able to pull some of that stuff off and and make it feel natural that they really like 
that was incredible. That was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All cylinders, man. Like, I don't know the director from any of his other stuff, uh, John S. Baird. Um, I obviously know Coogan and Riley, like we've mentioned, and they were, this movie was written for them. They were the first choices of everyone were they? involved. Yeah. I, I will uh, say, uh, uh, just to, just to, because of that, I, I do want to just quickly mention um, the makeup. I totally, yeah. at no point was I ever even le- le- concerned about it. It never really came into my mind until the end nope. of the movie where, where, uh, where Beth and I were talking, we we're like, how much CGI do you think was in that? And, and I actually, my, my, my jump to on this was I, I looked at him and it was like, it looked pretty good and smooth and everything like the the weight. And it, it made me think of, and not in a bad way, by the way, this is not like this. It just made me think of people thought the, um, I don't remember what they were called. The engineers in Prometheus were all CGI and then they were totally all, uh, it was all, uh, makeup. Okay. Yeah. The makeup was that good. It was like, it, it, and, and his makeup was so good that there are moments where like, I don't know if there, there's any CGI there, but if there is, it looked f- flawless. They, they, if there is, it was made to serve the practical, which is arguably how it should be done. The yeah. effects in Stan and Ollie were as good as in Prometheus is what you're saying. Correct. If I'm reading. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to get too much farther without mentioning the wives. Fantastic mm. performance, both of them. Nina Arianda is the, the every moment she was on screen for me, she she stole scenes every time. Is she actually Russian? I don't I, think so. Okay. But geez, she is so funny. Might as well be. She was so perfect, so pitch perfect and funny to me. Like there was the moment when she first shows up and she's kind of a loud, brash Russian woman that doesn't, like, she's always smoking and she's very, very um, forward and, like, and and blunt. Mm-hmm. She's just very straightforward <laughs> and blunt. She's not a jerk. She's, she's really freaking funny. And I love that at no point does Stan ever, like, there's no... Like there, there, there's, it's not combative. It comes on the, no. the, the minute she came on screen, I was like, don't be that please. I didn't want that to happen. That sucks. Yeah. And there was always like the, um, Ollie's wife too. You always like, I was like, don't turn her into a, you know, like broke up the band type wife. Cause right. she's also pushing for him to take care of himself and he shouldn't be doing all this and you're working him too hard, stuff like that. But they don't, they don't do that with either wife. And no. it's, it's really, and, and they have, they have, uh, um, I love their little moment at the very end actually with the throughout the, throughout every scene you see them in they're they're friendly to each other but they're not overly friendly they're they're right. I, I, I ollie's wife refers to her as exhausting like oh you know her she's she's exhausting type thing yeah and and you can see that that the those two women are very different people and at the very end when there's like that knowing bit about this is probably the last time we're ever going to see this happen stan's wife reaches over and grabs a hold of Ollie's wife's hand and and they she Ollie's wife's like her face was like the best part was her like right. looking down and being shocked and and there was that like what that moment that washed over her and it was it was almost it's like she realized that that Stan's wife gets it like she totally understands and and I don't know it was a great moment man it was because they, when you say she gets it, uh, there are several moments where Stan's wife talks about, oh, I used to be a dancer, uh, Preston Sturgis. You know, I did a movie with Preston Sturgis. He mentions a couple of times. I love the moment, and I think we'll get to this party right after this, where she mentions that and pretty much just that and walks away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and, and then the uh, wife, and then, and then Ollie's wife just kind of finishes it for her and goes, right, we've yeah, got to yeah. go check on the boys. Uh, Ollie's wife played by Shirley Henderson, by the way, which if I had to guess is Moaning Myrtle. Oh, maybe that's who she is. Okay, I don't know. If that's just my guess. Could look it up, but who's got the time? Who's got the time? Who's got the time? But yeah, that moment is is beautiful for that reason because she's a very different... Uh, she's the one who doesn't necessarily understand show business, <laughs> supposedly, but then by the end, we we know that she does. Shirley Henderson uh, is Babu Frick. So there's that. Babu Frick? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I had the wrong reference. My fault. <laughs> Thought that was kind of, kind of a <laughs> didn't see that coming. Uh, that party. So the elephant in the room is that movie that Ollie did with the elephant, and they don't ever confront it until this moment in the party where it is brought up by 
she was Stan's Myrtle, wife, by the way, because she it is Moni Myrtle. Yeah, yeah, good call. <laughs> uh, so it's brought up in a way that it then becomes a subject of Stan and Ollie's conversation now. So they have to confront it, and it's at this after party when uh, they've done. I forget if the tour has turned around at this point. I think it has, right? Is this one of the bigger? Yeah, it's one of the bigger parties. It's the one okay. that's. This is the one I think that leads. Like it's right. It's right before they do the. They kind of get to the very end. They, okay. they do the last show. Yeah, because the tour, like we said, it started out kind of slow. And really then poorly. They There's agreed like a, to do publicity, I, which meant like you know these kind of little stunts and appearances that they were trying to avoid. But it actually did, according to the movie, boost sales and attendance. So stuff was going good. Uh, they go to this after party and they're approached by a couple different people. The subject of the movie is brought up and they begin to finally talk about it. And again, this is a biopic. I always talk about how I like to ruin these movies for myself by looking up the actual things that happened. Yes, always. It's nice when a movie is kind of proofed against that. And I think this is one of those. Like a perfect biopic to me makes that stuff not matter. Because yeah, I obviously know that any perfect representation or portrayal of some of this stuff is not going to be cinematic. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm watching a movie. That's going to be boring as hell. Yeah. <laughs> so I get that. Obviously I'm into that, but I think when it's done perfectly is when they do that in a way that teaches you about the events in a way that you never would have learned from the events, like learning the actual A to B of what actually happened in their careers I still like it. Obviously I'm that history buff, but when a movie teaches me more or communicates more or communicates the stuff that I can't read about those incidents is when it's more valuable than that stuff. And this is one of those movies. And in this moment where they're finally addressing this moment where Ollie made a movie without Stan and he felt betrayed, they're doing it in front of this uh, post-show audience, you know, at this little get together afterwards and uh, there's two physical comedy bits. Now, I can't remember the first one. They say something or something happens, and the crowd has already turned on them and started, or not turned on them, sorry, has already uh, <laughs> turned looking their towards them, them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to start watching them. And this first little bit happens in their real-life argument, and it gets a giggle from the crowd, right? And then Ollie starts to walk away, and Stan throws a roll at him, and it gets another laugh and then applause, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is not a bit. You know, this isn't... Because throughout, there are a few of those like they did with the uh, front desk at the inn, you know, where they do bits in real life just to kind of make people laugh or whatever. You know, their wives arrive and they do the car bit, you know, standing Right, for, that, for, for the Mario. newspapers and stuff, yeah. yeah. This isn't one of those moments, but it still gets the laugh and the applause. And it's, it's part and parcel with another trick that's used throughout the film is when they are in their dressing rooms and we see them through their dressing room mirrors and it does it at least four or five times. And at first I wasn't quite sure maybe what they were getting at. I thought it was just a neat thing, but by the end we're seeing more of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Literally, but also figuratively in those moments, because it's also the moments where they're writing new material or they're bouncing material off each other. And Ollie is just this, consummate fan of stan like you know he's always laughing at stan's jokes you know it's the duo i kept thinking of somehow was actually chris farley and david spade sure you know all those behind the scenes stories where david spade talks about how chris farley never stopped trying to make him laugh like like yeah. they're in the dressing room at some point and he's chris farley is like david david like turn around david and he's like no he's like i'm not gonna do it and then finally he does it and it's fat man in a little coat you know like right in their dressing room right this isn't on stage like sure sure no it's i think that's a totally valid you know outside of the fact that they both physically kind of have that resemblance it, it, they're that they're a great that's a great duo to 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 <laughs> analogize against and david spade did the movie with the other guy that wasn't chris farley it's and it's it wasn't like, good <laughs> like i'm sorry i get it he's chris farley's dead but david spade that means you can't work anymore <laughs> and, and hasn't since it's crazy <laughs> No, actually, I'm, I don't mind David Spade, actually. No, David Spade's funny, man. <laughs> he wouldn't do the sequel to the Benchwarmers, though. Only Lovitz would get in on that. <laughs> anyway, so it's... 
the the way that it blurs the line between entertainer and person <laughs> yeah when they finally have that argument they say some things that they quote unquote didn't mean ollie tells stan that he loved laurel and hardy but he never loved him right yeah it's the stuff that kind of rings true in your darkest moments and again i don't know how much of this is is true to life but in that moment and for what this movie has created it's it's pretty deep you know it's pretty that that was a it's home <laughs> that, no that that was a great moment that whole sequence is great because it is it's everything we see it, it's it is it's that throwing the role it's it's there's a lightheartedness to it but it is such a not lighthearted conversation and balancing that keeping it like this is Laurel and Hardy and to everybody around them to everybody external to that conversation this looks like a gag but to them right? it's not yeah. funny and they know it it's almost th th there's you know Ollie Ollie is leading to a point that there is no Stan Laurel there's just Laurel from Laurel and Hardy th I don't know it was it was a good scene man it was a really strong back and forth between the two of them and uh yeah am I am I blowing past some of the if I what else have you got I... no no I think I I think this is this is you know again where we can talk performances all, all day long. They're great. They're, they're, you know, all, everybody puts it in they're, they're We're not missing anything here. The look of the movie itself, I think also really nice. Actually. Uh, yeah. the, the yeah. costuming was, was, oh, yeah. was nice. I, I was actually, I admit I was a little, I, I, I would say that, that that's the thing that did the least for me was that you, you put the, you know, this is, this is the time period this is based in. And I don't know, it, it didn't like, I didn't not feel there, but it was just like one of the, eh, like costuming was not tip toppy best thing in the world. It's, it, <laughs> and I, I think, you know, based on, on direction, I think direction wise, I think was great. You know, I think Baird, he, he understood his subjects at least. I, I think he, he had a real good grasp on Laurel and Hardy. He said they were heroes of his. Honestly, I got so caught up in other aspects of the film. I don't have any notes on the directing. So it was really good maybe then <laughs> I, no, I no i i think i think this is a case of um i don't think the directing is is this isn't something where, where you're going oh my gosh that was outstandingly directed you know this is a movie where the direction is good and it, it's good because it takes a back seat and lets the performances go sure um, gets out of the way and lets the yeah the stars shine sir yeah i think it does and i think he did a great job you know setting the shots working like he did everything right I think that's the thing is I don't think he did anything wrong. I just don't know that. Yeah. I think this is a movie where, where yeah, performances are going to shine more than anything and they have to. Yes. Still I'm caught up with what I think might be the overall message of this thing or what hit home with me by the end. Uh, we get this breakdown in communication. Uh, we get uh, Stan, or I'm sorry, Ollie telling his wife that, okay, that's it. I'm retiring after this. And they're not talking to each other. They do another publicity. <laughs> Sounded like Ben Schwartz there for a second. Publicist. They do. They do another publicity stunt, and Ollie has a mild heart attack. They take him back to the hotel. Uh, his wife takes care of him. Stan goes out, and essentially, after finding out that Ollie is not going to be able to return, Stan goes out and sets up another show with another guy uh, uh nobby he's he's a fictionalization nobby knocker or something i can't remember his name uh, <laughs> british comedian good enough <laughs> in fact i guess this whole situation wasn't real like stan never would have even entertained the idea of carrying on the act without ollie but it's there to communicate again the timelessness of this thing and it mirrors you know what all he did at the beginning of the film so that falls through though he can't go out on stage and do it and he goes back to ollie and they have this moment where they bounce some more ideas off each other after ollie has already told him he's retiring you know they're never going to make this robin hood movie that supposedly this tour was going to finance right. that fell through already anyways and stan wasn't able to tell ollie but even then in that moment and 
you know, Ollie gets cold. So Stan hops into bed with him, kind of holds his hand and <laughs> they bounce those ideas off each other. It's a fantastic, another fantastic moment. Great freaking moment. Another kind of bittersweet one. And Stan leaves and that's it, right? Ollie's going to retire. So Stan's sitting in his hotel room, doesn't want to tell Ollie that he's going to cancel the tour because he can't go on without him. Uh, but Ollie shows up at his door and is like, show must go on. Let's do this again. No idea if this happened, but I'm bawling at this point. <laughs> sure. You know? And they do this last show and they have that montage of all their different bits. So good. They have that last dance where he's like, are you sure? You know, he kind of springs it on him. He's like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. You know? And it's like, you're not going to die. And he's like, I might, whatever. <laughs> Pretty much. But they do it. And it's just, and again, the way that whole sequence, that part, that is maybe there, Actually, yeah, there's that your, is wonderfully shot. There's your, in every there's your moment yeah. where, where if you got to say the direction took a, took a, um, like a, 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 a big step, he really nailed it with that last yeah. sequence. Okay. Yeah, definitely. That's easy to see. But that's that dance right then and there. That one that at the beginning of the movie, I'm like, okay, I got to look up why this is funny and how much it means at that moment. Not just because he might die, you know, because he's he's literally risking his life <laughs> to do this thing in a way. You know, it's that now I also get it. I get the joke. I get the value type thing. And the movie taught that to me throughout. And it's it all comes back, just came back to me in, in a really awesome way, I thought. But it's not the end of the movie. One other thing I want to mention. Okay. They're on the boat back to the States and uh, still talking about that movie that they know will never happen. Yeah. But before they start talking about it, Stan is like, hey, it, it got canceled. And Ollie's like, yeah, I, I know it got canceled. And he's like, well, how did you know I know? And he's like, well, when did you know that I knew? And they do a little, they do the almost do a routine. And then Ollie says, well, what would my line be right here? And Stan comes up with it. And it's another beautiful moment, right? That Okay. I think this is what it all did for me. There are times in my life, uh, right now included, <laughs> where I know I'm exhausting or have been or can be because, quote unquote, somebody that's known me at some point, is everything a joke type thing? And honestly, I'm not surprised if if you haven't told me this at some point, but because there are moments where you send me texts and I text you back a joke and I, you know, this is probably my own insecurity. On the other end, I just hear people saying, man, is he ever serious? <laughs> you know, I've never seen a movie that really talks about this thing in me to just always want to be funny. And it's not, <laughs> again, it's, it's gotta be exhausting. I know it is. I, I'm, <laughs> I could bring my wife in right now, but I won't. <laughs> I can't because mine's exhausted. She's away from me. <laughs> but I've never kind of seen this in writing, so to speak, that it's still in existence. Am I ever serious? Yeah, I'm serious. And there's an aspect to all of that. But on the other hand, what's the point of that type thing? I've never seen it communicated so well that there is life in the bit. Sure, sure. Like, because I'm making a joke doesn't mean I'm not saying anything or I'm... Uh, it doesn't mean you're not engaged in the situation or understand the, that, se the yes. severity of it. No, I... All the time, man. I, okay. Uh, I, and I'm real <laughs> bad about it because I... I <laughs> I, 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 I am personally the funniest person alive. So I think I'm always funny, but no, I mean, I, I have definitely put myself into weird situations where, uh, bad, serious thing. And I said something I thought was really funny <laughs> and nobody else did. Okay. All right, cool. It's all right. <laughs> it was just really cool to see. I've never seen that community. Or again, sure. 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 Maybe it's just arriving at me in that way, but this was something and the other thing it hit home with is that especially with this whole uh, quarantine thing i've been seeing i've been doing a lot more social media like we've been and it's to connect to others it's not because of any th of the horrible things about it yeah i don't know this is weird i don't know but, where you're going with that but all right <laughs> <laughs> i've just been doing a lot more of that so i've been seeing a lot more of of other people's posts and I've talked about this always irking me before, but there's been a few running around there about the real heroes, which I couldn't agree with more like the uh, health workers, all of that. Yeah, sure. Real heroes. But this statement that's going around, does it 
it, again, like it's an either or proposition about, it mentions actors, it mentions some things that, yeah, I get aren't, you know, <laughs> necessarily uplifting most of the time, uh, reality TV stars, stuff like that. But it denigrates him in a way that let's not forget who we needed in this moment. And I'm like, yeah, you know, the health workers should be paid more and they're heroes and all of that. But it's just another drop in that bucket that, that entertainment is worthless or mindless. Like it might be mindless. Okay. It definitely is mindless sometimes, regardless of how you watch it. It also might be mindless because of how you watch it, but the amount to which entertainers and uh, (laughs) people get denigrated for that obviously irks me being, you know, what I've studied and and where I come from and what I try to be some of the time. I now have this movie though that I can point them to and be like, yeah, okay. How much TV are you watching while you're quarantined? How many movies are you watching while you're quarantined? And it's one thing or another to say you're watching them to shut off. It's another to say, these people are just there when I need them and I'll throw them away after the fact. Like, it, you know, why does stuff like this go up in value? Why is it in more demand in times like these? Is it because it's worthless? Probably not. No, I, you know? I mean, they, you know, look, I, I, I am, I am, I fully, I, I, I agree with you 100%. And, and I, I, I fall into that boat too. This is the one that get, I like, I love this. I love that that you have people that, like they get so up in arms when like <laughs> these actors are all useless. They should stick to what they're good at, acting and shutting oh, their yeah, mouth. Oh yeah, it's part like, and parcel. Yeah. Okay, he, so, so let me get this straight. Shut up and act. Shut up and act. <laughs> right, right. But why are you? Why do you then get to talk? <laughs> like, like, like you don't want to hear. I don't want to hear from the stupid actor. Okay, well, I don't want to hear from you. Shut up. You know, at least the actor makes entertainment and something I want to watch. You're sitting here behind a keyboard looking like an A with a B in their C. I don't know, man. I don't even know what all those words are. When it comes down to it, if you're going to, yeah, if you're going to go ahead and and denigrate the entertainment industry, I hope you sit in a gray room by yourself and you look at the wall like you don't get crayons like don't be an idiot but now we have this movie is what i'm saying and maybe it's coming at a perfect time and i'm bringing stuff to it you but are man this just seemed like a perfect rebuttal to that because it is just this perfect representation of maybe not the exact things that happened sure but it's why they happened it's how they happened and why they're important and why these two men are like they are like stan one of the bits at the end you know it gives those three little lines at the end that are like this is what happened after the movie ended still you know ollie died eventually stan also died eventually like 10 years later but he kept writing bits for laurel and hardy until the day he died right like that right there that line was just like oh these people matter this stuff matters this movie matters uh 90 stars out of out of 80 Nailed it again. That was. That, I'm sorry. Do you have anything else you want to mention about this? Um, you, you know, I, I, I guess a, a, after after everything that, that we've said, obviously we're we're singing praises here. We both really like the movie. I, I would go so far as to say I love the movie. Um, yeah. I, I I think that that one of the things that this is just a fun little aside, a little addition that I really love was when they film that tiny little, they show the tiny little bit of of what if Stan and Ollie had done the Robin Hood movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. There, there are a couple little bits here and there where you get clips of them doing the bits. And this one being like, it just totally made me go, I'm so curious now what that movie is. You know, what what was the movie that, that, that Stan had come up with? And it's great because the moment in particular that they, that they quote unquote film is, you know, they're, they're like you said, Ollie is, is just, he loves Stan. He think he is a fan. He's not just like his part. He's a fan. He loves what yeah. he does. And the thing they shoot is the, is an idea that Ollie had that he brings to the table that Stan puts the words to, you know, the, the whole, uh, um, well, robbing from the rich and, and, and giving to the poor seems like a lot of work. That's too much effort. Why don't we just rob from the poor and give to the poor? That way it's all done. See? Cut out the middleman. Yeah, yeah, cut out the middleman. And like and it's just it was a great moment and, and I love it that. Is, yeah. But no man, I, I top tier film. Totally, absolutely highly recommended in every respect. Loved it. Really loved it. And that, of course, brings us to IMDb Stupid Trivia of the Week. Boop, 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 Are you boop. ready? I can't wait. I'm so excited about this. I love it. It's my favorite <clears> part of the show now. Here it is. 
Steve Coogan was born almost eight months after Stan Laurel's death. <laughs> oh, that's that. There we go. Not even to the day. Almost. God, the connection. It's nearly mm. there. And I think that's what made the movie sing. Almost trivia, you could say. <laughs> it's sequel to Almost oh. Famous. They're <laughs> also directed by Cameron Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> almost <laughs> trivia, directed by Cameron Crowe. <laughs> Okay. Hey, uh, let's do the rest of the show. Do you have any other movies you want to talk about? I got a couple. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. What are we going to do next week? Uh, Well, we are going to, as previously mentioned the week before, we're going to finish up that trilogy of the Edgar Wright Cornetto films, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, The World's End. We're on World's End, baby. We finished up. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, we did Shaun and and Hot Fuzz one after the other. And let me tell you. Those are movies that I have seen <laughs> at least five times yeah. each. Okay. Nobody's going to come to that show and be like, did they dislike any? Of <laughs> there will be no surprises for this. You know, Hot Fuzz, not as good as I remember. You know, the funny thing about what you just said, though, is it's totally not true. It's as good as I remember. <laughs> well, that's next week. Cornetto Trilogy, come back. Also, still, uh, uh, we'll save the where we are for the last little bit. Do you have anything you want to talk about for the rest of the show? The any other movies? Rest of the show, I got a couple that I'd like to just briefly mention. Uh, do it. T- speaking of fun movies that have to do with death, uh, there's a movie on Netflix right now called death of Stalin. Oh, the it's a comedy. Uh, it's got the, uh, lipstick. Buscemi, Steve Buscemi. That's right. Lipstick Buscemi. That's what we call him <laughs> around these parts. Old lipstick Buscemi. <laughs> Yes. That could be bad. Steve Buscemi, Jeffrey Tambor, um, uh, Jason Isaacs, um, just ridiculous cast. It totally is. It totally takes place in that the during right before the death of Stalin and the entire movie is it's a very black comedy about about the idiocy of that government and government in general and who's backstabbing who before well stalin's gonna die if stalin well i'm gonna take over but you can't take over so we gotta get him out of here he's a communist so kill him and and (laughs) buscemi playing khrushchev is just utterly delightful and seriously highly recommend you watch it really funny it's not hard to see like just looking at those historical events and seeing a comedy in them rather than, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and one of my favorite parts about it is that nobody <laughs> nobody puts on an accent. So everybody Great. just talks Perfect. like the way they the way they talk. It, you know, so, so Buscemi's Khrushchev just sounds like Buscemi, me and Khrushchev. <laughs> yeah, there, there's some really good stuff in there. Patty Considine is in there. I love him. He's great. Also, one of the Andes from Hot Fuzz. So that was fun. Oh. Uh, good flick. You've got a mustache. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So that was great. Highly recommend it. Totally worth a watch. If you cool. are feeling a little frisky and you want to see something kind of also ridiculous that, that uh, uh, will double feature with that really well, there's a movie that came out, feels like a decade ago, probably has been, called Jack Boots on Whitehall, and it's puppets. And it's got like Ooh, Ewan yeah. McGregor and just a, another just swath of actors doing voices for it. Okay. It's really funny. Very good. Uh, and this is, you watch this also? or I didn't. Just, That's this one that I, oh. after we watched that, I went, oh man, I should totally get Jack Boots on Whitehall because Beth is Gotcha, gotcha, it. gotcha. Uh, the other movie I watched, real quick, just love this movie. Wanted something super funny. Uh, the Money Pit. Oh. That nice. movie is never not hilarious. Everything about that movie may be perfect. <laughs> that movie is great. We, I th- want to say, we just watched a movie that, has the money pit playing in the background. Oh, maybe I did. Oh my gosh. Was it, was we it told, Mr. Mom? I, it might be. No, uh, maybe. I don't know, but I do know that there is something with the money pit playing in the background because I just recently saw something with it too. That's weird. Hmm. Might have been Mr. Mom. I don't know. We'll look it up. I don't Edison. know. That movie is super yeah. freaking funny though, man. That just, nothing will ever top Tom Hanks dying laughing when the tub falls through the floor he's just like the the his the forced laugh that he has and he just can't stop it's so good i don't know if i've ever seen it honestly it's on yeah. netflix or amazon i'm not sure which shelly long tom hanks uh you got alexander goodenov in a bit part oh dude it's so freaking fun it is and it's it is perfect for right now because it really does to a point touch on some of the uh uh 
<laughs> oh, you're going to buy it. You're going to buy a new house, huh? All right. Sucker. It is. Uh, it's great. It's really funny. The ki- your kids might... will actually probably really like it too. Actually, yeah. Uh, this might be a false memory, but I want to say my parents came home with two VHSs of The Burbs and Money Pit. Yep. And we started watching The Burbs and I was too scared. So they had to shut it off. And then I think I never saw The Money Pit. Like maybe they watched it after I went to bed or something. So. Burbs is no question by far and away my favorite tom hanks movie nothing even comes close what really oh, yeah love the burbs man the burb it, and huh. and that is like they're the, the closest thing to a number two in terms of tom hanks movies after that is joe versus the volcano which huh wow you're you've got a you've got a, a type oh well, well but because but, tom right, hanks type but then but then after that see my next favorite tom hanks movie is probably that thing you do which I'm probably gonna okay, watch. Did you today, tune actually. in for that uh that live stream I of the reunion? I didn't, but I did clip through. I, I I watched clips of it, and I gotta go find it. Yeah. It was it's cute. It's really neat that they that they all got back together to do to to do the the thing. And did uh, they perform at all? I didn't see anything. I thought okay. they were going to. That's that's what, what I, the, the when you first told me that they were getting back together, I was like, oh, they're gonna perform. And then as time went on, I was like, wait, no, they're they, they wouldn't no, see, do like that because I, we, I've seen a bunch of bands do the whole like together alone thing that the together it's but separate oh, where they're sure, playing yeah. together. And and I thought they were gonna do that. They I don't think they did, but uh, oh um, wait, did they? Oh, okay, yeah, they weren't in the same room. No, were they? they just all got in the same call. Yeah, yeah, it was all. Sense. And then they brought in a couple people. Colin Hanks was there for a majority of nice. it. Um, oh, cool. They brought. Um, was Tom Hanks there at all? I didn't see or? him pop up. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but they did. Why. They did get. Um, oh, I can't think of the dude's name now. The guy who does like the best Christopher Walken impression in the history of everybody. And he's got uh, the podcast. Ross Marquand. Oh, dude, this is this, this guy is way better than Ross Marquand. Oh, he was in freaking Usual Suspects. Kevin Pollack. Kevin Pollack. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pollack showed up for a little while. Yeah, he does. He does a. Uh, he does Chris Walken, of course, but he also does a uh, freaking Argo. And uh, now I ben can't Affleck. remember names. No, <laughs> Alan Alda. Alan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got a bit about how he would leave voicemails in Alan Alda's voice on things. <laughs> I remember he would hearing get calls from Alan Alda like, "You got to stop doing this, man." <laughs> <laughs> no, never. Uh, yeah, love the Money Pit. That's good. Uh, last movie Money I watched. Good. Yeah, that's that. What we were talking about? Horror, horror <laughs> flick that uh that came out um. Uh, recently called Braid. Wow. That was, that's one hell of a movie, man. That was a mm. great little horror film. It's, uh, it's about, uh, um, two, uh, uh, college student, two, two college women who are, are, uh, um, using they're they're selling drugs to, to pay for tuition and all that. Sure. They end mm, up as you do. At, at the, and this is all like the very beginning. Like it's only like two minutes of this like exposition, but they immediately get like there's a, a a raid on their little apartment, so they have to run and they get out and raid. Yeah, they get Sorry. sprayed. Um, Can't. <laughs> and then Gareth Evans or whatever comes in and teaches and has Iwo Uwe beat the crap out of them. Um, <laughs> Eco Uwe, that's maybe his name. And in any uh. case, so so they they go back to their hometown and they had a best friend the three of them were friends for for years but their friend has a some kind of a mental condition and they are f- th- but they know that that her parents died and she has a huge inheritance so they want to go steal money from their friend and pay their you know their drug mule de- dealer or whatever back uh and they have to play a game of make believe with their friend and this is as they were kids, they weren't allowed to leave. Like you had to finish the game and it was, it was uh, like, they kind of would get a little snarky with each other and they get older and it becomes a little bit more violent. And then we start finding out that then there's all sorts of other mental stuff that goes on throughout the movie. And it's, Oh man, it gets that, that, that ending was a great freaking ending. What a movie. Totally worth it. Huh. Braid. Absolutely. <laughs> fantastic never heard of it it's got is it new recent yeah last year i think okay i think it came but it was not a big like this didn't hit theaters or anything this is like a small is this a shutter i don't Uh, think it was shutter i think it was fangoria i think fangoria produced this one 
<laughs> really, really good though, man. Just super freaking great. I will have a look. Anyways, uh, there was another movie that I was going to talk about, but I don't remember what it was. So that's all that I got. It? That's all. Are you sure? No, but that's all I got. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, you know, I wasn't going to talk about Mr. Mom, but I watched that. Oh, so, good. so I might as well follow through with it uh, being super fun and great. And I had no idea it was a John Hughes, which I feel like you have since talked to me about doing a John Hughes show before I, I told you I had watched this movie that was in fact a John Hughes movie. So it's true. I also maybe watched that'll John happen, Hughes and movie. maybe I'll save talking any more about it since then. What was that? I also watched accidentally watched a John Hughes movie. <laughs> oh. It's easy to do, man. I watched uh, uh, National Lampoon's European Vacation. Yep. Apparently, he did all the vacations. I don't know how I missed his involvement with those. Yeah, I totally forgot about it. Wasn't thinking about it. European Vacation is by far my favorite. <laughs> I love uh, that one so much. It's been like that was the first one I want to say I saw with a friend that I wasn't allowed to hang out with after that. Sure. Uh, <laughs> But I've never been crazy about him, but it's been some time. So I don't know. Like even Christmas Vacation, I, I think it's just built up too much in my mind. But Christmas. this is reminding me, I watched uh, the the movies that made us for Home Alone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that good? Another John Hughes love property. Love it. Yeah. Great movie. Still love uh, it. And a completely grating but fun uh, show. <laughs> ah. I guess I'll save it for TV Volleyball. But Yeah, I'm interested in that. Uh, John Hughes everywhere. You just can't, you can't get away from him. R.I.P. Uh, the movie I kept thinking about more often than not with San and Ollie, though, was actually Darkest Hour that I watched a bit ago. Yeah, yeah. It's the Gary Oldman Chamberlain biopic, I think it is. No, no, he replaces Chamberlain. Uh, Churchill. Churchill, yeah, possibly. yeah. And that's, that's a yeah. fine, good watch. It actually it reminded me because it's really similarly filmed. Like, it's very golden and, and digitally golden kind of looking and uh, cheeky. If you will, Ooh. I feel like, yeah. Love me some cheek. It's basically just Gary Oldman being like, watch this, everybody. And, I'm you know, Gary Oldman. <laughs> being good and stuff. So Pay me money to be awesome. Yeah, worth a watch. So Sure. That's all I'll say about it. <laughs> Fair enough. But I actually don't have anything else. I feel like I should and don't. Yeah. What have I been doing I don't know. with there, my life? There was court. another movie I watched, and, I, and it's killing me because I cannot for the life of me think of what it was, and it was something I really liked. Hmm. All and right, I well, had, stay and tuned I had, for next week. Yeah. Will we talk about things we remembered that we liked that we forgot about. The Cornetto Trilogy! On Book Club for Movies. Yeah, I guess that fits that. No, it doesn't. I never forgot that I liked it. I've never those. forgotten. Never forgot. Never forget. Uh, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and World's End. And that'll be next week. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. As always, uh, if you want to hang out, we are on Twitter and Facebook, even though that's been a little and somehow less active as of late. <laughs> uh, but we're there. And uh, podcast at bookclubformovies.com if you want to email us, as always. You could, so. you could do either of those. I recommend you do it. We recommend it we're biased but yeah. if you recommend if, if you email me a question about some type of movie i'll tell you what movie you should watch he will yeah, yeah. we'll do a whole show on tangents if you want to email us about movies yeah, give we, me that, gi give me your information what's what streaming services do you have and i will tell you what to watch and i will there and, you go and the answer is going to be get shutter here's an idea for a show somebody uh, this might be the the problem to begin with somebody recommends a movie any movie Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily watch it, but we talk about it and we just keep the conversation going. Like it's a, basically a tangent show. I, I love they, it. Somebody starts us off and we, it's like oh, the rest of the show. This is, but this is, this is our equivalent to, uh, to the solo bolos when, when, uh, oh, there you go. When he right. and Benny Schwa do the, do the, um, the song Olympics. You're right. <laughs> just, that is totally it. Yep. It's, so I love if it. you want to see a movie song Olympics, <laughs> Give us a starting point yes. and we'll take it from there. We will everybody. do that and it will be great because that will just be an absolute, oh my, I love this idea. We need a rule. We need an ending. I mean, the song Olympics, it's easy to know when that's over. We need to, we'll, we'll, know what we'll it, figure it out. We'll know when it ends because there will be okay. a sputtering where we just kind of go, oh, it's been three hours. All right. Shazam. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's coming up. Uh, not next week, though. Cornetto Chill. Tri 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 All right, see you next week. Bye! Bye.